Just recently in Star Citizen, we got our very first look at the biggest player-ownable ship in the game, the Aegis Javelin. One of just a few capital ships that players will be able to buy in-game and fly around with their orgs. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and in this video I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you guys for the first time a bit about the future of Star Citizen with capital ships. Now, there's not much known about their exact plans for the future, but I have heard things here and there, and I've got my own personal feelings and thoughts about what I'd like to see out of these ships. And so this is going to be an exploration of what is known and what is hoped for, and I invite you to join the conversation down below in the comments section, or to join my Armco community on Discord by going and clicking on the link in the description of this video. Oh, and I've got a Twitch channel too. You can ask me questions live. Sorry, had to plug it. I mean, I'm trying to grow it, so now you know. So sit back, relax, and I'll guide you through some information about your future mothership. So let's begin with roughly what we do know. With a length of nearly half a kilometer and a beam of 198 meters and a height of 72 meters, the Aegis Javelin Destroyer is massive. She has a total possible crew complement of 80, meaning that to field her will require quite a few bodies. But that's not the only way you'll be able to fly capital ships in Star Citizen. You see, the world of Star Citizen isn't only going to be players. The majority is going to be made up of NPCs that actually have tasks that they're doing in the background. There was a great video done at CitizenCon this past year in 2019 about Quanta, which is this background control that dictates where all of the NPCs are going. It's pretty advanced and very interesting, but the gist of it is, is that some of those NPCs will be looking for jobs. They'll be former military personnel or private contractors that you can hire to become part of your crew, to do things like fixing the engines, manning the turrets, maybe even piloting your capital ship, though that last part's not quite certain. They've never actually said that bit. Which means that you are going to be able to focus on the things that you want to do. Alternatively, there will be an option to slot in some AI server blades into your ship to control some ship functions like turrets, but they won't be able to do things like maintain the engines that will always have to be performed by either an NPC or a real player. However, all of this is going to be quite balanced by other aspects of Star Citizen. Hiring AI is going to come with the necessary caveat of having to feed them, clothe them, and pay them for their services. So if you have a lot of AI crew, your costs are going to go up. There's also the cost of maintenance, the cost of refueling. All of these things can't be done by NPCs or AI. That's something that you're going to have to take care of. And before you say that, well, I'll just pay for it all myself. No problem, right? Well, the first capital ship we got in the game, which is nowhere near as big as the Javelin or as expensive to run, cost 250,000 AUEC just to refuel the hydrogen. And that's ignoring things like maintenance and repair that you'll have to be doing. And no, you can't just insurance claim it in the end game because that's going to be considered insurance fraud. Probably the biggest caveat of all though is that big ships like this can't land. They can only be docked outside at a port exposed to everything, and that means that they could possibly be boarded or destroyed at any time. And while yes, things like the Kraken and the Idris can land, you might not want to because you'll be telling everybody where you are and the cost of landing is also going to be expensive, especially if it's in a gravity well. So then why have these big ships if they're just so risky to fly around and so expensive to maintain? Well, the most obvious reason to have a capital ship is to support your organization's holding of certain areas of the verse, say sections of space or planets or moons, so that you can maintain your control and fight off any unwanted NPC or real player intrusions into that space. But there's a secondary and I think even more important reason why you would want to have a capital ship in the future of Star Citizen, and that's because what they've talked to us about your personal inventory. 
The way it is right now in the PU is it's global, meaning if you go anywhere, you'll always have access to things like your weapons, your clothing, your armor, your ships, but that is not the case for the finished version of the game. Your inventory is going to be localized, so if you take off your jacket at Port Alasar and go to Grim Hex, it won't be accessible there at Grim Hex anymore, you'll have to return to Port Alasar. Alternatively, you've got store lockers on ships and that's where you're going to be able to put your inventory. But that's not all. You see, the beds that are located in some ships, especially bigger ones, are also log-off points. When you go to sleep in Star Citizen, you'll be able to select a bed on a ship and wake up right where you were before, effectively making these big capital ships mobile bases for your organization to move about the Versa. Some ships, like the Javelin, are going to have dedicated areas for people's ships as well. Like the Idris here, she actually has an internal bay for ships that can fit up to three gladii or ships of similar size and a crew complement of 28. Meaning that you and some of your buddies can park your ships on board, log off, and then if you log on with only one or two friends still on, you can take your ship out of the bay and go to a mission and return back to your little flotilla. Practically speaking, they're also going to do things like extend your range. They're going to be able to jump further and go for longer without the need to refuel. They'll have huge reserves of things like food and water, ammunition and fuel, so that you can always be mobile and not have to worry too much about stopping at the local truck stop, which probably won't exist on the frontiers of space. Of course, remember that all of these things are physical and have to be restocked by players at their own expense. They're not going to regen their own food or water or fuel. That's something you're going to have to pay for, and that's part of the big caveat of these ships. They're going to be hugely expensive to run and maintain, to keep stocked, and that's why, really, they should and probably will only be used by organizations of moderate to large sizes. But that's roughly what we know about them right now. So next, let's talk about how I envision using them and my hopes for how Star Citizen will implement them when they actually make their first appearance officially in a bigger, more developed verse. Personally, I hope to use these things as I alluded to earlier in the video, as a mobile base for my organization to be able to achieve our goal, which is to retake at least in some small part our homeworld from the Van Duel at New Armitage. It probably won't be possible, but it will be fun to roam around the verse in a flotilla something like Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> and the Van Duel will be our very own Cylons, I guess. But I also think more practically speaking, as a streamer and as a content creator, that I'll be probably hunted quite a bit in the verse. And so having a mobile platform that's always moving positions between streams and events will make it much harder for us to be caught up to. But I imagine that many people will choose to use their big ship fleets like this. As I said, you can't land a javelin. You've got a docket, which is very visible. Everybody can see that you're there, and if you've got an enemy org looking to take you out, they're just going to wait for you to leave that armistice zone and maybe try to blow up your very valuable asset with all your buddies' inventories on board. However, I do envision that some capital ships in our fleet will be near the front lines, but serving more of a logistical backup role to our main fleets of smaller fighters and retaliators, which will be on the front lines of any battle that we have. Now, we don't know the full extent of the logistical support these things are going to have. We do know that, for example, they can refuel and they can repair in some cases, like the Kraken has its own dedicated repair base, but you can imagine they can do things like extend the range of the fleet's navigational computers, being able to detect people from further away and link up with, say, forward recon ships and rear defense ships that will be scanning for anybody approaching from behind effectively letting us know where the enemy is before the enemy knows where we are. I can imagine that more than just guarding territory, they could be a source for an org for refueling if you're at war with another organization, for rearming, like I said, and storing your inventory if you're worried about going to port. This will likely be extremely true for those of you who decide to become pirates. You won't be welcome at very many ports, and so your cap ship may be your only refuge. 
But maybe we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. They're still working on server meshing actively right now over at CIG, which is going to enable big ships like this. 80-man crews right now are bigger than a single server shard, so that's going to be kind of a big requirement. But what do you guys think? Did this inspire any thought or hopes about Star Citizen's future with capital ships? Have you envisioned any sort of fleet that you'll have once it becomes possible? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also be sure to mention if I've missed anything, I surely have, there's always something else that we can talk about in Star Citizen. So I guess until we see that happen, we're gonna have to get used to just a little bit of shenanigans in the verse. I've been Morphologist. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, you know what to do. See you guys next time.